Crayola released their Colors of the Wild crayons. And I'm gonna attempt doing realism with them today. You know I love to challenge myself, so I guess we'll see how it goes. So grab your own supplies and let's go. Hey people, it's Temi if you're new here and today I'm attempting something different on my channel. After Joanne McLaughlin's recently released her video featuring these, I started getting loads of comments asking me to use it in the video but obviously drawing dark skin. And funny enough, a while ago Crayola reached out to me, I think they saw my cheap versus expensive eye and they sent me the crayon. So these have just been sat in my drawer for like six months, maybe even longer. And I thought today would be the perfect time, try supplies I haven't used before, childish crayons, try to do realism with them and see what we can come up with. I'm aware they also released a color pencil set and I actually ordered it and I've got it also. So in a future video, I will use the color and pencil set. So let me know in the comments, do you want to see another cheap versus expensive, but obviously doing like a dark skin full portrait? I feel like that will be a mess. But let me know if you want to see that in the comments. But today we're going to focus on the crayons and let's go with the swatches. So here's the box the crayons came in and you can see that they have color names on the sides and guys, look at the color range. Can I just say I am so impressed with Crayola for creating this set. In comparison to like buying a normal set that will have like one peach, one quote unquote skin tone and one brown, I am here for all these shades. And it's grouped into three main undertones. So we have rose, almond and gold. So I'm gonna swatch them quickly. I will keep them swatched in their groups as well. And starting with Almond, it has 10 shades, ranging from extra light to deepest Almond. And then we have Rose with fewer shades, but still a great selection. And finally, Golden. I must say guys, I am very impressed with the swatches. You already know I'm here for the color range, but also the pigmentation is just incredible. So now I have to test some blending because if we're going to attempt realism, the blending needs to make sense. And this is my first time using crayons, so there's no rhyme or reason to this blending approach. I'm just trying to face this the same way I face my coloring pencils, where I use the layering method. So first I'm attempting a three color rose blend, and already I'm seeing some issues. It looks like I can't really get into the tooth of the paper properly. I'm seeing some whites of the paper coming through. I don't know if I need something with more texture. I don't know if I need to sharpen it to a sharper point. But yeah, I'm not really happy with this blend, but I'm going to try another layering method, but this time applying the lightest color all over the area first, and then gradually building pigment with the darker colors. And I'm definitely feeling this more. This blend seems more seamless and it's encouraging. I still have the issue with the finish. So I don't like the fact that I can see the whites of the paper through. And it doesn't seem like layering more will get this to a burnished point. So I'm going to try to use a solvent and I'm going to see if it will help with the blend. This is the one I'm using, I'll link it below. It's the Zestit Pencil Blend. And first I need to make sure I put enough pigment down so that the solvent has enough to hold on to. And to be honest, I have no idea if this will work. But solvents work so well for colour pencils, especially wax-based pencils. And I figure since crayons are basically wax, what's the worst that could happen? Now that I have this cute light blend, I've got some of the solvent in the lid next to me and I'm just going to apply it with a brush. And okay, it looks like it's doing nothing. <laughs> Maybe I don't have enough pigment down, so I'm just gonna apply some more pigment. And now it seems like it's actually helping it blend, which is good. I'm really liking the way it's looking. We have managed to get rid of the whites of the page. And I think when I try to do artwork in a bit, I'll have to use a solvent just to help the initial blend. By the way, if you're using a solvent also, make sure you're doing so in a well-ventilated room. After this blend test, I think the crayons will be able to blend into each other, but I don't think this is a sketchbook for me. So I'm going to try to use my mixed media sketch pad. And this is the trusted one I use in nearly every video. <laughs> but I think the texture in this sketchbook will help the crayons to stick. And since it works well for wet and dry media, I'm sure the solvent will also act accordingly in the sketchbook. So before I attempt any art with these supplies, I feel like I need to approach this with as much caution as possible. So I'm going to try practice blending in this sketchbook. And for this, I'm going to try a spherical blend and I'm thinking of attempting lips in this video. So I want to try a rosy pink brown blend and I'm using a few colors from the rose selection and adding this deep brown, which is the very deep almond. Thank you. 
And this is what the blend is looking like. The final thing I want to try for the bottom sphere is a darker blend, but I also want to try using an indenting tool and this will help preserve some of the whites of the page so that you can see the whites through after I've shaded. So don't worry if you have no idea how it works, I'll show you in a bit. But I don't actually own an indent tool. I'm just using this dotting tool from a nail brush set that I bought and literally never used. <laughs> I'm just drawing random shapes and you see that as I start to layer, you can see the whites coming through. And this will definitely help for areas of gloss. I don't know if the solvent will seep into all of these white areas, so we'll have to play around with that in a bit. So adding the solvent is definitely flattening the colours, I'm glad I'm able to layer them back up to get to an opaque point. The last thing I want to try is putting a white pen over the top because clearly the indenting tool isn't enough to preserve the whites so it's great that a white pen just goes over the top perfectly. I'm happy with this blending trial and I'm excited to attempt a drawing now. So here is the reference I'm going to attempt. I think it should be very difficult. The vibrant colours, the detail, the shine. Anyway I'm gonna have to give it my best shot. I've done my sketch off camera and getting all of the detail for the shine was really a headache. It took longer than I care to admit. <laughs> but to transfer, I'm shading this random yellow soft pastel on a separate bit of paper. So my plan is to have the yellow sheet face down and my sketch over the top so that I can trace the sketch and all you see is yellow. To answer a few questions that I get in my videos, I don't like to sketch directly in my sketchbook because the sketching process for me is just trial and error. There's a lot of erasing, there's a lot of this and that, there's loads of extra lines, and I like to do all of that on a separate bit of paper. And this is just normal printer paper. And then when I have the sketch looking how I want it to, then I can transfer it. And here is the sketch safely transferred. To be honest, this yellow is yellowing more than I thought it would be. <laughs> So maybe I should have chosen a brown or a different colour, but at least I can see the lips, so we can go in with the indenting tool. I've already captured so much detail in my sketch and I don't want to lose all of that as soon as I start putting the crayons over the top. So hopefully the indenting tool will keep some of the details so that when I go in with the white pen at the end, it will still make sense and make my life easier. Jumping straight into the colouring process, I've already started to map out the colours, where I want the pinks, the browns and all of that to go. When I tell you there's no rhyme and reason, I'm just making this up as I go along. I'm just trying to match the colours. I've got the reference in front of me, I've got my swatch sheet next to me and I'm reading the colour names and then trying to apply it. <laughs> So I started with the lips itself, but I find that when you draw on white, it's so much harder to understand anything in context, and I hope that makes sense. But I need to colour in the skin around the lips so that the lips don't feel like I'm going too dark, even if clearly I don't even have enough pigment down. And that's layer one done. And after layer one is down, I'm just going to add more and more pigment. I'm just going to try layering up until the point that I can use a solvent to blend. So layer one was super light and now I'm pressing down even harder and trying to be more bold with my colours, just trying to get a good amount of pigment down. Now that I've got some covering on the skin, I can now try to enhance the browns in the lips, just to make it make a little bit more sense. I'm adding one more layer to the skin and I think this is a good time to go in with the solvent to help blend the pigments together. I've got my solvent in the lid again and by the way I've got a scrap bit of paper under this page just so that it doesn't seep through because I'm going to be generous with the amount of solvent I'm using. And I've just started with the skin just trying to see if it will blend together because you can see my quite harsh strokes and I'm gonna need all of that to blend. And now doing the lips, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I don't know how I feel about this. The solvent definitely is blending and it's helping merge the colors, but it also feels like it's just completely flattening everything. Any 3D effect I was trying to do is just in the bin. 
And to be fair, this is just a few layers in. We're probably even at the ugly phase. So it might not be that deep yet. But to be honest, I think the colors in the skin tone set, even if it has a wide range of colors, I don't think it has enough depth for what I will need. And I was just minding my business in Tesco one day, doing some normal food shopping. And then I found this set of crayons. All of these colors, you know, all of the pinks, all of the reds, all of the blues I'm always shouting about. You mean to tell me there's a crayon set with all of those? I had to buy it. And to be honest, I can't tell you how happy I am that I found this set because with my normal portraits, with my normal anything, you cannot just catch me using one brown or three browns and calling it a day. I need those purples. I need the orange. I need the yellow. <laughs> I need the green. And with this drawing, I've just mentioned about the flatness in the lips. And I don't think layering brown on top of brown will actually help me today, no matter how many shades of almond you kindly provided. So I'm going to use the purples and the reds and the blues I always speak about. And I'm going to show you how much vibrancy it really adds to the drawings. By the way, I left the drawing for a few days for the solvent to fully dry. And yeah, I'm just continuing with layering even more pigment down. And now I'm adding the purples and the blues and the reds just to help create a bit of dimension to add a little bit to this drawing. And I was actually on TikTok Live at this time drawing live. So shout out to some of you that might have caught me there. It was very random and spontaneous. <laughs> but I'm thinking of doing YouTube lives in the future and even more Instagram lives. So let me know in the comments if that's something you'd be interested in, just like a chill draw with me. The more layers I add, the more full the drawing feels. And at this point, I'm just trying to get it to an opaque point. I'm not too fussed about a blend because I think it's got a good enough base blend. But I'm just trying to add the right colors to help me get good enough values, good enough contrast with the piece. And bearing in mind, I'm going to come back with a white pen for the extra, extra, extra shine at the end. So I'm just trying to make sure the base of everything is making complete sense because the white pen is going to be the final step. And to be honest, I could blend the skin out more, but your girl does not have energy again. This drawing took longer than I care to admit. And to be fair, I've actually stopped time in my drawing. So every time people ask, I have to like figure out based on how much footage I have. Just know it took a long time. And for the fact that I'm here using children's art supplies, Crayola needs to cut me a check. Now why highlights time and I'm so excited. I'm using the trusty Sakura jelly roll. It'll be linked down below along with all my supplies. And it really just ties the whole thing together. It just simply elevates the drawing. Now her lip gloss is popping and it's cute. Everything Lil Mama said. And I'm just adding all the finishing touches and this is what the drawing looks like. If you cannot tell from my voice, I am pleasantly surprised. I did not imagine for a second I'd even be able to create something that even makes sense with crayons in the first place. Talk less this masterpiece. Guys, I'm very proud of this drawing and it's my first proper drawing in over a year by the way. It's just showing me that your girl still got it. <laughs> so I really hope you enjoy this video. I hope you learned something. And I have other tutorials on my channel. So take a look at my portrait drawing playlist. Please like, please subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Goodbye.